Christ. Welcome to the first live webinar with Sir Torius. The topic is data integrity in a modern day lab. I would like to now introduce you to Heiko from Sertorius, who will be presenting. Thank you very much, Dana. Good morning, good afternoon together. Um, as Dana already said, my name is Heiko. I'm from Sertorius, and I will talk today with you about data integrity and connectivity in a modern lab. What does 21C of our part 11 means? And yeah, thank you for attending. I appreciate that. And I'm looking forward for the next 45, 60 minutes together. I hope everyone can understand me well. Um, before we go into the presentation and we go into, okay, what does data integrity means and how do we solve that, especially for weighing applications? How do we solve that in a lab? I would like to just shortly introduce myself. My name is Heiko. I'm 33 years old. You might heard a little accent. That is not the typical Californian accent. Um, I'm originally from Germany, Switzerland. I work for Sartorius since over seven years now in Switzerland, and then I was transferred here to the US, to the Bay Area, and now I'm in San Diego. Um, as I already said, today we will talk a little bit about what does data integrity mean and how do we take that into the lab? What could we answer? What could we avoid? And what does it require? Sartorius has a large segment of balances. Today we will speak when we talk about a balance, just about the Cubis 2, our premium product, because 21C of our part 11 is just on the premium level available, generally. So in the past, a lot of people bought a lab instrument, or a, in this specific case, a balance, and they just had to know, know what they are doing, and then they bought a balance. But in the modern modern ages, it got more complicated. Often we can't decide that alone. We need the QA, regulations. What, what do we have to work under which regulations? And often the IT. How do we integrate an instrument into our network, into our limb system, our internal network, and so on? So it's not just alone us a few more stakeholders come in to that decision. And one of them is the word compliance. What does compliance mean? Yeah, all of your data has to be accessible, doesn't have to be deleted, has to be controlled, has to be original. So a lot about your data. Compliance comes from the FDA, from the Food and Drugs association and they call it as 21c of our part 11 that is the most important regulation for us to follow if we talk about data why is data fundamental to our process hmm. or why is correct data fundamental i think that's important one because inaccurate data leads us to wrong decisions i think that is logic in in every yeah, let's just look outside at the pandemic. If we develop now vaccines with incorrect data, I would have a problem with taking it. The same with, of course, incorrect data increases the risk of compromising product safety and quality for food, for drugs, for a lot of different things. So documented data and correct data has to matter. It can have negative impacts on a product on the product costs, on the patient's health. So you see the pictures down here, I think they explain themselves. Um, it might break the trust between patients, inspectors, shareholders, and the brand. Of course, the data is highly important and it has to be as accurate as possible. Now we have the word data integrity, and it is a pretty big word, too, to be honest. Um, 
what does it mean? It may ensuring our data is recorded exactly as intended. Mm -hmm. And ensure the data remains the same as when it was originally recorded. So the time is important. Maybe the person is important. There are a lot of different things are coming together. Data integrity guidance state that data integrity risks are higher when processes are manual or paper-based. I, for myself, work for several years in a lab, and I like counting in my head. <sighs> um, yeah, we make mistakes, and even I had to accept that sometimes I do too. So if we optimize our data, if we optimize processes, that helps us a lot with being, being compliant. Now, of course, or maybe you are asking, okay, now he's talking our data is so crucial, um, especially if FDA regulated. How do we achieve that? And a lot of people who work with 21 CFR Part 11 know Alcoa, the Alcoa principle that is from the guidance for data integrity. If you follow the Alcoa principle, then you're compliant. So what does that mean? Attributable, legible, contemporaneous, original, and accurate. Those are the five key factors to be compliant. Let's transfer that, this into our into a lab application. What does that mean? Attributable. Who acquired the data? Who did the work? Who performed the action or who changed something? If we do an internal calibration on an instrument or if we create a user, all of this has to be recorded as well the changes in setup. The second point, legible. Data must be permanently recorded and be readable. Um, I had applications where I worked not regulated and where, um, yeah, the data didn't matter too much. So you maybe write it down and that's it. And sometimes you write it wrong. And But here, if you want to fo uh, follow Alcoa, if you want to be completely compliant, permanently recorded. So we need to have an option for maybe a backup or that the instrument itself memorize everything what you do the third point contemporaneous not my favorite word excuse me um was the data documented at the time the work was performed so is, isn't there a time change can you change the time hopefully not original is the data the original record or a trusted copy or did someone went into the data, went into a file and changed something. That is a point which we have, of course, with our, with our private data too, um, is in a lab important as well. Is the data original as intended? And accurate. Are there no errors, no editing of data or of the communication? So those five points, and we are completely compliant about our instrument. How do we do that? So now I talk about how we do it. Um, with the Cubus 2, as I mentioned before, we have the first standalone, completely 21 CFR Part 11 compliant weighing instrument in the world, which doesn't need any software driver things. So how do we do that? The balance has a package of tools. In, in its software. So we have an access control and a user management. That means that you can create several users, hundreds and more. But not just that, not just that you have individual users, then everyone gets an individual access. So individual passwords, maybe the LDAP password connection to your company password or individual access controls, like if you type in your password two times wrong, then you need to go to your supervisor. 
if you don't log out for 30 seconds, the instrument blocks you. Um, so you can set up absolutely um, individual access controls to your needs and to your level of security. Security, excuse me. Um, if you have a complete user management with clear divided roles and everyone, the instrument knows exactly who is on the instrument, then it's pretty easy for you to sign up e-signatures. Because if you can ensure that there's someone individually on an instrument, yeah, then you can enable e-signatures and every printout is automatically signed. Besides that, time synchronization. We talked about that you need your data at the same time as you, as you did it. So you need to ensure that your instrument is totally inside time, so synchron time synchronization. Excuse me. Um, safe data transfer. Do you have a backup? Does, will every data get backed up into your server? So if something, maybe an electricity shortage or something happens to your instrument, that you know your data is somewhere safe. The backup. Um, oh, for the safe data transfer, when you transfer data to your backup, can someone access that data? Can someone change the files? All of that is in safe data transfer. The backup, as I mentioned, um, every eight hours or every morning or every evening, will your data, which you have on the instrument, will be backed in your network or cloud or what else? And then, do you have an audit trail and an alibi memory? So, does the instrument record everything what you do, what you measure, and what you change on the software? And if you have all of those eight tools, six different boxes, but it's eight tools, um, and if you set them up as you need, then you are fully compliant. Now we took a look at what did the FDA mentioned in the, in the last years and where did they complain about things? And we went to our customers and, and asked them, okay, could you please give us a, or, or let us take a look at a few warning letters? And we have a few examples from the last few years, which are very often the examples, very random examples, because, um, yeah, the technology wasn't there and a lot of people had the same challenges. So what are the examples? The examples are backdating of data, not documenting the batch. That is something which I see very often internationally, not just in the US, but as well in Europe. Um, not following the own procedures. Every or a lot of people have SOPs. Do we follow them always? Yeah, FDA says not <laughs> in, in that example. Um, transferring data incompletely. That happens very often. Data captured in loose sheets of paper. I worked in my past mostly with paper. And yeah, since I've learned more about data integrity, I see the arguments against it. And missing or insufficient audit trail. So a lot of individual examples, we have a lot more, um, which the, probably you have your own, which the FDA complains about. So now we know, okay, why do we need data integrity? Our data is crucial. How do we do that? Alcoa, I gave you the example with our Cubis 2 weighing instrument. Um, now let's take a look, what does that exactly mean related to the examples with which the FDA is stating? So I've brought a few examples from the FDA, so we can take a look at exactly what, what do they mean. So we found from the FDA, FDA that they complained about, or they said they had a finding, um, that shared accounts allowed analysts without traceability to change date and time settings and modify data. Shared accounts is there the issue. 
That's why we are working here, as I mentioned before, with the user management and the clear access control. If you set up individual users in your lab, you need to do it one time when you buy the instrument, you create your 10 users, everyone gets an absolutely individual strong password with clear access rules. Um, you get an automatic lockout after in activity. So you set up the instrument as, yeah, before you want to use it, you need to individually access so the instrument knows who you are. And as soon as you walk away, the balance blocks you out. So no shared accounts that the balance is still under the account from someone and you're working on it absolutely individual would work against this FDA finding. Another example there is related to the same, have a clear role management and always the correct time. So the FDA found that analysts manipulated the time. We have heard that pretty often. Um, and it was able to set the clock back and repeat analysis for undocumented reasons. Why role-based access control? Because if you're the head of the lab or a supervisor or whatever, or someone in a lab has a supervisor role, then you have the ability in, in, in our user management to create every role which you want, completely individual. And then you can say, okay, there is one person which is allowed to change any settings like time control. And everyone else is allowed to measure and print, but nothing else. So you give a clear role-based access control to know who is able to do what on a balance. Besides that, you can as well um, set up the automatic time synchronization, which protects from any manual change in time and it's yeah it synchronizes the time automatically the third example is about the audit tray um, i mentioned it for the fda findings that often the audit trail is something something the fda complains about or finds and now no audit trail function was enabled hmm. Some balances have an audit trail at function, but customers are not, or you know, some people are not activating it. Um, and what types of injections were made, who made them, the date or the time or deletion. As I mentioned, the audit trail doesn't measure what you're weighing, it measures what you're doing on the instrument. Do you create a user? Do you do the leveling? Do you do the internal calibration? Do you print something, do you lock in, do you lock out? So when we have this complete user management, then it would be good that we record as well when everyone is accessing the instrument. So the FDA requires, or 21 CFR part 11 requires, that you have a complete audit trail which record, records everything what you're, you know, what you're doing on the balance. It has to be always active and shouldn't be inactivated. Let's say it like that. Um, the audit trail has a few rules to follow. It has to measure the recording with the exact username, the date, the time, it comes back to the time synchronization. So everything has to be always accurate. Um, okay, the language is not that important. Oh, a good audit trail and I saw several different ones on lab instruments. Um, there are easier ones which, where you can't scroll in, where you can't filter. A good audit trail gives you the ability to, to search for everything. So if you have an auditor in your company, you can just type the date or the person in and you find the, the, uh, the position which you want to have. Another example from the FDA where they said, okay, that is something crucial. A lab record has to be signed, has to be individually signed by that person. So often the FDA 
and they told me one time too, um, says laboratory records fail to include signatures. Of course, I remember as well the times where we handwritten signature and that was kind of okay too. But if you, if you can automize it, why not doing it? It gives you the higher level of security there. When you have an individual username, you just set up the e-signature and it appears on the bottom of a printout. Um, is is only accepted with personalized accounts and strict authentication. Comes back to access control and the user management. But if you have that e-signature is possible too, help you to be completely compliant. We have another example about the safe data handling. So the FDA came back and said, okay, we found that standalone laboratory instruments were not backed up. They were, yeah, standalone and didn't have any capability to back up data. And the, they discovered that the database usage logs, audit trails had been deleted from your high accuracy particle counter instruments. Um, a deleted audit trail, no, <laughs> that doesn't come very well for the FDA. Um, so yeah, we need to have a safe data transfer so that we know, first of all, our data is safely transferred, then somewhere backed up, and no one can change or delete anything. So what did we do? We have, I already said, the audit trail, so the data is there. We have a special safe data transfer with an MD5 checksum, so if you access the data, it is clearly visible and you can see who did it, when did he do it, so everything is documented there as well. Besides that, you can set up your individual backup. I always recommend for more advanced um, applications that you have a backup for audit trial LA by memory, all of your data, because it could be in five or 10 or 15 years. For example, Japanese requires 30 years of data. Um, yeah, that you need it again. And with for example, this instrument, you set up the backup how you want through the connection which you want and you set it up in the time you want. It can be twice a day, one time a day, that is up on you, but we recommend just having an update. Um, besides safe data transfer, there is an interesting point. Invalid records may only be marked as such together with a reason. Now you might asking, yeah, but invalid data, I don't want to have that. Yeah, we don't want to delete any data. And it shouldn't be possible to delete any data. So we want to have everything recorded. So now let's imagine someone goes, example, with a balance, someone weighs something but forgets to tear or there is something wrong. I did a mistake. Hmm. Should I now just put it away and then go on? No, I need to document that. So we have the ability to flag values as invalid. I go on in my in my work, I make then my measurement, and at the end I click on my printout and I can say, okay, the second value is invalid. And I have to type in a reason. So I would put, okay, I forgot to tear or something or different or wrong sample or something. But at the end, when I get my printout, when I have my documented data on my printout and in my backup, I will see what I did and what I did wrong there. That has to be recorded as well, is part of safe data handling, that you're not able to delete that. You flag it just as invalid. Another example is the monitoring of the status of an instrument. So the FDA found that it, it failed to monitor and investigate error signals. Um, signals indicated the loss or dele uh, deletion of original CGMP analytical data. And some observed that you attributed numerous 
incidents to power interruptions, connectivity problems. I talked about power interruptions as well when we had the backup. So um, that's again a good reminder there to have that. But a lot of instruments, when they have any incident, sometimes they flash or they give you a sh small warning, but you need a place on an instrument where you can see everything and in one click you get there. So kind of a monitoring status for the system that would theoretically look like this. This is from one of our units where you see all on the left side all yellow messages. There is a warning, something is, maybe the internal calibration wasn't run or there wasn't an error in printing. Everything is di directly visible and in the middle you see, okay, the unit is leveled, so that is fine. You see the last calibration data, you see the errors, you see messages. So as we have it from our mobile phones, we want to see on the first on the first view what is. Is anything which I was missing or can I work? That should be able with lab instruments too. Okay, those were a few examples from daily work, from daily work from my customers here in the US and where we, where we talked about and where we had actual cases. So all over, how do we achieve data integrity? How do we minimize risks for your organization? Ensure all computer systems are 21C of our party level compliant. Okay. And then for your instrument, use a role-based user management. Implement complete undeletable audit trails. Secure your records with limited system access. Goes back to the role-based management. Um, maintain backup recovery procedures. Design a quality management system with SOPs and logical control. Properly, properly train users and maintain training records. That is something which the instrument can't do, but we as a if you ever need a lab way in training, give us a call. We can help you with that definitely because training is important. I've learned a lot since I'm on the safe side for balances against the side when I was uh, in a lab. So con conduct internal audits to evaluate controls and procedures. A lot of different things on that checklist to to have to be compliant. Um, I hope I made it a bit simpler with the, okay, how do we, we achieve it and what are the different tools for that? If someone asks me, is your instrument compliant? Yeah, no. Yes, it is. If you set up all the, the, all the features, then it is the only thing lab weighing instrument which is fully standalone compliant without any additional software if you don't set them up it's not compliant so it's always that uh, that game besides compliance i showed in the beginning that we need next to our qa as well our it so let's take a small look into that what does that mean compliance and connectivity in the future 2020 and so on and those are examples from our Cubis 2, from our premium unit. Um, the trends all over the lab and all over the industry are going into centralized data storage, automized processes, digital. Okay. A lot of customers, a lot of companies work with softwares, LIM systems, ELN systems, cloud-based systems, completely individual. What are the advantages? You have everything at one place. It's easy to evaluate. Comp you have compliant data handling and you have paperless documentation. In terms of environmental things may be important too. Um, and the instrument integration into a LIM system is, can be difficult. Um, I always get the question, okay, can we connect to a LIM system? And, Okay, which limb system? There are so many, so many individual solutions. And from a manufacturer side, we decided at one point to say, there are so many individual solutions to every one of you. Everyone handles his data, his, his 
connectivity different. So we said, okay, a future proof instrument just has to fulfill all connectivity requirements. That's it. What does that mean? That means in the past we had the hand print out. If we did something wrong, we stroke it, we gave a short comment, maybe with your initials, that's it. That is one way to do it. Another way is to have the safe data transfer into your limb system or the metadata or an instrument completely integrated into your system, into your network, into your, yeah, your system. <laughs> the other way is to connect an instrument to a middleware or a converter. Ask your IT if they like it or not. Um, has a few disadvantages, it, it costs money. If you can connect an instrument directly to your limb system, there is nothing between. You need to worry about your limb system, for that you have the technicians of that company, and about the instrument, for that you have us. If you use middleware, yeah, you need other IT people. It often costs you licenses. So I know a lot of competition goes with the middle software. There, yeah, think about that, give us a call. What do we do if we go direct into your network? That depends on you. Future proofs means a lot of options and you can choose. So a lab instrument should support a wide range of connectivity options, yes. The interface and protocol should based on standard IT protocols. I can agree on that too. So what do we do? We still have the normal printer. If someone wants to work with a normal lab printer, works completely fine. But besides that, you can set up a lab instrument, or in this case, a balance, as well with your office printer. Any network printer close to you where you would like to have the, a normal paper size printout might be better. Or you go directly paperless into any server, ELN, or LIM solution. And we list a lot of different possibilities to do safe data transfer because we are so open. I just recently, just a minute ago, I talked about this middleware. That is the way which our competition likes to go. We like to, now yeah, a lot of people ask me, how can I connect your balance to our LIM system? And my answer is more or less always the same, how you want. Call your IT or your LIMS company and they will connect it. Because our job isn't to sell software or something, especially not in future-proof times where 10 years ago it was logic to have a special software and get the money for that. But if, now we are in a time where you want to connect your instrument as fast as possible. So we said, okay, we supply a possibility to so you can choose your connection. Do you want to send PDFs, CSV files? Do you want to connect it into your individual LIMP system? Do you want to go over ICP? Do you want to go over web service? Do you want to go over HTTPS? So there are so many different op um, options to connect the instrument into your process that it's, that it's up on you. We deliver an instrument which is open and can be accessed. So now I would like to show how could that look, yeah, in a future-proof process. How does a complete automated, in this case, weighing process look? And probably a lot of you saw that already, that you have a sample, you can type your batch ID, sample IDs into a balance, you can use barcode scanners, makes it easier. The data goes directly into a LIMS software. The LIMS software, in this case, we use StarLIMS as an example because we already have examples where we connected it. The LIMS company sends the information directly back to the instrument and tells the instrument, what is your job? So in this case, it's not your job to weigh just one sample. It is your job to weigh the sample 10 times. We are here at the third measurement. So the balance tells you as the user, you scan your sample, the data goes back and forth, and the balance 
tells you, okay, weigh your sample the third time and then proceed to the incubator, for example. And a day later, you scan your sample again and the balance tells you, okay, scan, weigh your sample for the fourth time and go back to the incubator. Until the end, until the balance sends all the calculated data, if you want, with special calculation formulas, back to the limb system and you have all data there collected. So we have a full process where data and sample IDs and application tasks are sending back and forth without you manual typing in or manually doing anything except doing your normal lab work. From my experience now with with our new instrument and with data integrity and connectivity in the last one and a half years, this is just the beginning. We have more advanced possibilities where we completely integrate our instruments now into processes. And yeah, it always depends on you and what you would like to have for a solution there. That finalizes mostly my data integrity training um, i wanted to explain what does that mean why is that important especially now in those uncertain times which we have um, it will be increased we see it over the last two or three months that the let's say for a vaccine production the fda is pretty generous right now but for everything else the rules are pretty high and it will be higher in the next years. I think that is pretty logic. Um, then I wanted to give some examples. What does that mean in your lab daily life and how we plan to implement the whole, the whole backup and connectivity part with our instruments in the future. So you see, you can work, for example, paperless and beside that you have your balance through your individual way connected to your system where you get automatically all the data stored to be at the end fully 21 CFR part 11 compliant. With that, I'm mostly at the end of my presentation to present about data integrity today and show you with our Cubis 2 a little bit what is possible if we talk about those future proof areas. Um, Dana, now my question goes to you, the Q&A session. How about this? <laughs> yes, thank you, Heike, for um, this you. presentation. It was wonderful. We're going to leave it up to any questions that anybody has. Yes. Feel free to type it in. We'll, I know there's a little bit of a delay, so we'll give it a few minutes. That is completely fine. Thank you. Oh yeah, and a poll is published. I see it up here on the right side. Is your lab currently required to meet 21 CFR part 11? Do you have three options? Yes, no, or I don't know. <laughs> Just from my experience, um, not everyone is yet required to work under 21 CFR part 11. Um, if you work in biopharma it could definitely be that you are if you work in an industrial environment it, it can be that you are but it can be as well that you aren't but Neil and then that, that it, i think it's always to I mean, i'm worried about my private data and what happens with it and if it would be my professional data i would at least think about it i think that's why you're attending today and maybe that helps you for any future decision related to your data handling. Excellent.
<laughs> okay. Um, of course, there are a lot. So first related to 21 CFR part 11, the most frequently, frequently asked question, do, re do you really not need any software? No. We, the unit which you see here directly in front of you would be the unit which you get and no additional software or something. I know our main competitor works with the annual license fee for just for the software. So if we do a return of investment, you can buy two balances for that price, which you spend over time. We don't think that just because you have to be compliant, you owe us money every year. So the instrument can be connected just as it is. Besides that, you see that why do we lift the draft shield from the weighing unit and why do we lift the display from the... It is a complete modular system. So I would ask you, what do you do? Do you use powder and have static issues? One of the most things I run into in, in the US that your balance is running because of static. Um, then we go with the draft shield who has an ionizer or a deionizer in there and we decharge your sample. But if you don't need that, let's not take that. Let's go a bit pricely more interesting for you. And then we go with the more advanced draft shield. So we individualize that instrument on how you need it. Last comment on that, if you ever work in a hood or in an isolator or in a weighing cabinet, you might need to level your balance. Um, I run into a lot of regulation complaints that balances are not leveled. That means that you need to screw the wheels and the little bubble is exactly where it has to be. Because if you are just one business card off on one side, you are off in a milligram range. So if you have a four or five place balance, you're off. That's why leveling is extremely important. But now it could be that you work with something hazardous, cancer, or anything which is not very health healthy. Then I might would not put my head into a cabin or into an isolator to level my balance. The instrument which you see in front of you has an automatic leveling. So you press a button and it does it itself because of safety. That is my last comment. I don't see a lot of questions. That's good. I hope it wasn't too boring and I answered all questions. Maybe, I hope. If Jackie would be on, she could do that very good. Yes. <laughs> you see, there's currently a promotion going on for balances through Thomas. And then I just wrote it in the chat. So, so yeah. So anyone who has attend who's been on this webinar today, um, there's a landing page that gives you the details. You will automatically get an extra two hundred dollars off of any of the Cubis two balances for your participation today um, on this webinar. And um, we're here to support you, Sartorius as well. Um, so you can get all the details on the actual landing page. And Cubis from my Correct. Give us two okay. only balances. Right. And from my side, if you if you say today, no, we, we don't directly want to buy one, but we want to learn more individually, or can you please talk to us or arrange a meeting with us to go individually on your case? 
reach out to Thomas, they probably reach out then to me and we sit together and have a chat with you or, yeah, I'm pretty flexible individual, so feel free. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for everyone who um, participated today. We certainly do appreciate it. The link will be emailed. There will be an email to, um, on the landing page right there. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.